All right, welcome to Semper Sometimes with Benny. So um, tonight I have Chris with us. Um, he is the owner of K Bar Soap Company, um, and I don't know anything about him other than that, um, and that he's a Marine, and uh, that's it. So I, I guess I probably just saw somebody share his stuff. Oh no, actually, now I'm thinking, remembering this, I remember what happened. The way that I found out about you was from a friend because I guess like at like a year ago your account got hacked and you restarted yeah. a whole new account and that's how I so I was a part of the new account um because a friend of mine I don't remember who shared it and like anything else you know someone shared it and I was like hey what is this you know and yeah. <laughs> here I am and um so right off the bat before I even you know let let you introduce yourself mm -hmm. um so I am a now customer of yours and hey, um, thank you. I'm going to be honest. I don't know. And it's, it's one of those things where like, you don't know if like I was a recruiter, so I don't know if I'm getting sold, but I'm not going <laughs> to lie. And I was telling my wife about it. Right. So I, for a long time, I was years. I've always been just like the, like I either ax body wash or, dove for men body wash like that's just like what i always use and i'm yeah. not gonna lie like i'm a really musky guy like there's times where my wife is like doug did you fucking shower and i'm like dude i just got out of the freaking shower so I just no, like, naturally. yeah i just i don't know what it is so um <laughs> so i came across your stuff and then right before and then i was like okay well, i'm gonna have him on the show i can't have him on the show never having had his his product and that sounded yeah. horrible. I just didn't sound it's right. Odd. It's but odd. um, <laughs> so I I ended up you know you sent me that and I got it and I'm gonna be honest, I so I shower like two to three times a day. It's a very I don't know if it's normal, but like the moment I like I shower in the morning before I go to work, I come home from work, I shower, and then I can't go to sleep if I didn't shower. So I shower like three freaking times a day. That's and I'm a lot. gonna uh, yeah, and I'm gonna be completely honest. Now that I ran out of it because I only got one bar, I'm missing it because I, I I don't know if it was just like exfoliation. I don't know if it was the sense of it, but like I really did no lie get out feeling more refreshed. And and my wife will vouch for this. I took even long like I normally don't take long showers just because I think it's like the Marine Corps in me. Like I just yeah. I hop in, I freaking you know, get my shit done and I'm hot. But now I had, I'm holding this grenade in my hand and I just continued to, to loof. And it wasn't like, <laughs> so I don't know. And I, and I'm going to be like, so, but honestly, I liked it. I liked the the smell of it. I, I actually really thoroughly enjoyed it. So if you're listening to this podcast and you haven't yet gone and gotten yourself some, um, you need to go get it. So that is definitely like I'm I'm legit saying that like and anybody who knows me knows that I don't say shit like hey go get this if I don't actually truly like it because that's just not who I am. So without further ado, Chris, welcome to the show. Um, tell us a little bit about who you are. Kind of give us a background on on you. Yeah, hell yeah, man! Thanks for having me. Um, definitely good intro. First of all, I'm <laughs> glad uh, you uh, showered with freedom and realized the difference it can make. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, I like to say my life started in the Marine Corps because I was on a uh, horrible path. And that was one of those things where I watched a buddy graduate boot camp. He told me he was leaving. Um, all I remember saying was, don't, you're stupid. Don't do that. Don't go to the Marine Corps. And that's just whenever I was on my whole like hell raising stage. Went and watched him graduate. And I saw the transition he made in three months. And I said, I got to do that. So I went to my recruiter. It was about two weeks later on a Friday and I left on a Monday. Like I went and said, I need to go and I need to go now. When's the next, when's the next, we're on minivans here because we're in South Carolina. So not a big bus of kids, but um, it was me and three other people. But um, I always like to say I was reborn on the island because that's where I feel like my, my life really made the transition for the better. So, so did that. I was a combat engineer. Go ahead. If you don't, sorry to interrupt you. If you don't mind me asking, what do you what do you mean by that? Like where, like what bad road were you going on? And Drugs. also, where are you where are you from? Drugs, jail, stuff like that. It was uh, it was a rough road. Um, but uh, 
from this was in Clover, South Carolina. So okay. small town, nothing to do. Uh, we're about we're about three and a half hours from Paris Island in upstate, just south of Charlotte. Most everybody that oh. lives here works in Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay, so you're right so there. Right, <laughs> yep, yeah, I'm a mile from North Carolina border. Um, that's that. I mean, we lived here. I worked in Charlotte when I worked corporate because you can make money and come to South Carolina and then not pay a lot of taxes. So mm -hmm. that's why everybody wants to live here. So let's see. Yeah, Paris Island. So I was an engineer in the Marine Corps, and um, but the bad road that led me to that. I was hurting my family, hurting myself, hurting. I was working to get a paycheck, buying drugs, doing, you know, staying up oh, all shit. weekend, the normal shit. I was a class two waiver, scored through the roof with my ASVAB, but because of my drug use, mm. I had to be an engineer or a grunt. And I was like, well, I like to build shit. I'll be an engineer. And then turns out I was an engineer for division. So I got to blow shit up and shoot guns. So a lot more fun of a profession. Yeah. Uh, but um, so that's how that ended up there. And uh, I didn't lie on my, uh, I didn't lie to my recruiter, <laughs> but uh, I, it's funny your recruiter. My dad threw me a kegger whenever I got back and my recruiter showed up on their crotch rockets and got shit housed and then left on them. And I was like, that's the Marine Corps right there. Buddy. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> uh. But it was good. And I, I, my buddies make fun of me and I throw this out there, but I was on a grad in boot camp. And I want to go ahead and get it out because if somebody finds out about it, there's there's a stigma around it and everybody makes fun of me. So I'm going to go ahead and give you that ammunition too. Um, <laughs> so did that when the boot camp, it was life changing. Loved every, I didn't love every second of it, but I never gave up, never did any, you know, never quit. And it gave me the mental toughness just to tackle anything else the rest of my life in just three months. I've often said, I'd love to just have a three month window of not having to do anything, just go back to boot camp. That's all I want to yeah, dude, it's not it's not a lie, man. Like I think about that all the time. I'm like, yo, right now, man, like just three months of it would just really freaking really put reset. me back where I need to be, man. Just three months, you know, and it's total reset, man. And yeah, it, it, and, and I think it, it's funny that you bring that up because like today, I it's like not, like this is really random, but an off topic, but you know, everybody thinks that the military is boot camp all of the time. So like yeah. my I at work today, I was talking to um to these the civilians that I work with, and they were like, I was talking about my mustache and yeah. um and my buddy. So a month ago, my mustache was huge and burly and disgusting. Yeah. And I'm about to go back. I just checked into a new unit, so I have to check in in like two weeks for this reserve unit. And I told my buddy, I was like, hey, he's like, why? Because I like, well, not my buddy, but this guy I work with. And because uh, I shaved it and he I came into work, he's like, oh, shit, like what happened to your face? Like, I haven't known you without a mustache and, since you've been working here. And I was like, oh, I got to get ready for drill. And I was like, it's easier for me just to regrow it in regulations. And he was just like, what do you mean? And then I had to, I had to explain to him that the Marine Corps has grooming standards and all this stuff. And he's like, oh, I thought you guys like had to walk around like bald and you couldn't have facial hair. And I'm like, that's boot camp. And he's like, yeah. oh, that's not like your whole career. I'm like, you believe, like, and, and that's the thing that's crazy. It's like people believe that, like, you, like, I'm like, dude, you think a 30 year a guy who spent 30 years in his career just never got a haircut besides just a buzz cut? Like, he had to do that for 30 years. Like, the idea that people think that boot camp is the whole career is just, yes, but that would be a living hell, uh, bro. Exactly. And no one, and then I would tell you never to join. Um, <laughs> but, um, so how was your, how was your Marine Corps experience, um, as a whole, how long were you in? I did four years, 2000 and 2004 did okay. the Iraq invasion in 03, went to Baghdad, did all that stuff. So my time was spent in Iraq, not Afghanistan, went to Egypt, saw the world, did all kinds of stuff and got to, you know, got to participate in the invasion of Iraq, which a lot of baggage comes with that, but a lot of good comes from it too. I mean, just a different appreciation for life for, for having been lucky enough to make it home. Yeah. Lost people. Yes. Um, but it, it gives you a different reason for living, you know, to, uh, and once you, once you get over the whole survivor guilt thing, and I won't say you get over it, but um, once you learn to, to deal with it and realize they want you to live, it's kind of a, um, I don't know. It's kind of freeing to think about it that way. You always miss them and they'll always be your brothers, but it's a. Uh, yeah. So that's know. something that like, I can't, I don't want to say I can't relate to only because like, luckily for me, like I did go to Afghanistan. I was in a few firefights, but I luckily never 
never got wounded. We came home with everybody. So like that's something that I've, I've fortunately, you know, haven't. And I think that's the thing that's weird is like I had this conversation in another episode with somebody, and it's like you have the guys now who are joining the Marine Corps and who are getting out, and they're mad that they didn't experience that. But then you have the people who are, and it's like, okay, well, I experienced it nine times out of 10 when I talk to people, you know, like yourself, they say, I would give it all back right now, like to not have that. And it's like, it's that weird, you know, like you, you you can't really have you, you, but then at the same time, like maybe you wouldn't be where you are if you didn't have those experiences. It's like that, like conundrum that you're in. It happens Um, for a reason, you know, stuff happens. Yeah. That cliche term. Hey man, everything happens for a reason. So how was how was that experience for you as a as a as your you said combat engineer right yes so how yeah. was that as were you were you um were you alongside infantry I would assume a lot absolutely or? we were attached to to first tanks on the whole march up so we did okay. tank security so we were out clearing routes getting shot at all the time shooting micklicks doing all the stuff clearing minefields um yeah and I mean it was a it was a time I, I always, I always go back to it. So we were in country for two months. We waited in Kuwait for two months while Bush gave the ultimatum. And then we crossed the line of departure and then fought, 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 made it to Baghdad. The third infantry division relieved us in place at the teardrop monument at his martyr monument. And then we made our way back. So it was two months in Iraq. And then we um, transitioned back to Kuwait and then LCAC'd out to the Bonham Richard, the ship that just burned up this past year. And then they went, we went to Australia and come back around, but I, it didn't hit me. You know, they say training takes over and that is absolutely a hundred percent true because I didn't realize the scope of everything that we did until I laid in my coffin rack on the Bonham Richard and I had my one little air conditioning vent and I twisted it and Pointed at my face because it was been hot as balls. We were in mop four for the first month of that thing. Oh shit. It sucked. Oh my god. They're afraid of him gassing us and stuff. So I was 145 pounds when we got back from Iraq. Like just malnutrition, dehydrated the whole wow. the whole nine yards. But then I lay in there in that in my rack and I turned the air conditioner on me. It's the first air conditioner I've felt in four months at that point. And it was like, what the hell did we just do? You know, like it was almost like it was a dream that you just do things you stay awake we stayed awake for four days when we got in country and you don't it's i don't know it's weird how it's weird how easily your mind will give up and your body can just keep going and Mm -hmm. going and going that's one of the the biggest things i took from the marine corps is that it's always between years you can always do anything you want to do as long as you don't stop and you and your mind you got to be mentally tough to get through all this stuff it's not necessarily just physically tough so Mm -hmm. you know I think it changed me for the better. There's a lot of stuff that you deal with day to day with problems from it. And I love what you do is try to put everybody together. You try to put, you know, missing pieces here and there, try to be a resource for vets to go through this stuff. Because there's a lot of us that, that are, there's a lot of people that struggle that are too damn hard headed to go talk to somebody uh, to get help. It took me years to realize there was a problem. You just think you're normal. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's the new norm. Now had I stayed in for 20 years, it wouldn't have been a problem. Yeah, that would have just been how you are as a Marine, right? That's just that's just it. Mm-hmm. But you get out and realize the the impact of what you've done and how not that many people have the lens you do, right? Yeah. So, but as long as you can keep the good in the front brain and kind of push the back back a little bit, or you know, live through it or figure it all out, then that's how that's just what I try to do. You have bad days, Veterans Day, Memorial Day, stuff like that, and you think about them. But um, I think about them a lot. But it just uh. I don't know. It's, I can't, I don't understand. You never join the Marine Corps thinking you're not going to get some, right? Like you always think, well, Marines are the fiercest force or the biggest or the baddest or, yeah. you know, whatever. They're always first to fight, but you kind of never think it's going to happen to you. Like I was just like, well, I'm going to join the Marine Corps. I want to go through the hardest one. Mm-hmm. And then I had a, a buddy's friend, just e- his son, just EAS that tells you how old I'm only 40, but one of my guys I served with had a son that went to Marine Corps, went to fifth Marines. He served, he did four years and he was pissed. He didn't get to go get some. And I was like, look, be careful what you wish for, man. Everything you're intact. Yeah. You don't have, you don't have the, the baggage you're going to deal with the rest of your life. I said, there's a lot of things you need to be thankful for, you know, that didn't happen to you that happened to a lot of us. So, yeah. And that's, and that's the thing is like, 
you know, like I said, like I have a lot of like, I, I, and and it becomes like that joke, you know, it's like, so I'm a reservist and I have a combat action ribbon and yep. I have a whole shit ton of friends of mine who are active duty infantrymen who've never gone to Iraq, never gone to Afghanistan. So like jokingly, I say shit like, hey, like when they call me a pogue or when they call me a reservist, I'm like, yeah, bro, the one that has the fucking combat action ribbon, like. Yeah. Because I, and and it's just joke and I'm just joking, right? But mm-hmm. then I started talking to my friends and and like one of my buddies, um, Sergeant Rassiopi, he he just um, lateral moved to I, I I think Intel, but it came to the point where he was just like he was like, man, I've I've done I've missed so much time with my family and my kids growing up, like training. But he's like, I've trained for an like for something that, that never came up, and 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 it's like. But that's the question is it like it's good that it never came up, but at least you have the training like it's it's that like the caveat, you know, it's like you don't know and you'll never know. But it's like, is it better to not know than to know it's, you yeah. know, and then, I, I and, get it. and then that's the and that's the and, but that's the thing that sucks, too, is that like so like someone like you, like you said, like you've you've had it times where you've dealt with survivors guilt or and you've dealt with stuff like that. Right. But then you have the opposite where you have Marines who, who mentally feel like I'm not even a Marine because I never did shit. Yeah. Like I, and, and I've I met that and, and I've met people be, and who I've talked to, but, it, and, and you know what it is though? It's also because like, I remember when I came home from Afghanistan, um, I'm not going to say his name, but there I was, uh, I came home from Afghanistan and I went to the bar and I was helping out with toys for tots because the reserves always deals with toys for tots. Yep. And that was still Lance Corporal was standing there with my stack and um, this buddy of mine that I had known, I, I, we were pulleys together. We had joined the Marine Corps at the same time. He was an infantryman. And um, he, when he was in Afghanistan, he actually, he was an infantryman. He was a machine gunner and he had hopped over. They were taking fire. They were taking uh, IDF and they were in a firefight and he had, he was like six foot four, big burly dude russian dude and um he had he had jumped over he literally just leaped over with his 240 and when he landed he broke both of his legs and he continued to take fire and 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 he was going at it with and um and he i ended up learning this later on but like when i saw him at the bar he came at me like oh bitch you didn't fucking rate your combat action ribbon i'm like First of all, you weren't in Afghanistan with me. You don't know how I got my combat action ribbon. You have no, but like for you to come at me and maybe I didn't, you know, maybe, maybe I really didn't rate my combat action ribbon. I don't know. I got it. It's mine. Like, I I don't know who's the bearer of who rates and who doesn't, but like what annoyed me is just the idea that like when people say you don't rate, well, who's the, who's the almighty God that decides that you do rate? Like, yeah. and that's the problem it, that you have in the Marine Corps or in any branch, really, is that you have people who are because you don't have to be infantry in order to get fucked up. You don't no. like that's a and, and that's what's fucked up is that you have Marines who now because of that leadership and because of that surrounding, you have Marines who get out and they're like, oh, I'm not even like I have a, I have a buddy of mine who literally. He told me the other uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was chilling with him, just having a couple of beers. And he was like, dude, I don't even tell people I'm in the Marine Corps. He's like, I don't even bring it up. He's like, I never bring it up. He's like, and now that I'm out, he's like, he's like, when I was home on leave, I never told people. He's like, because it always comes with the question of, hey, man, how many people did you kill? Hey, man, you got to be a badass. And then all of a sudden he's like, dude, I'm fucking admin. Like, and now he doesn't feel like he rates to even say it. And it's like, so it's like that thing where it's like, you're either one or you're the other and it's like so everybody's going through something and it's and that's the thing about it you know yes nobody knows nobody knows your lens nobody knows what you've been through except yourself right and nobody knows how they're going to handle it yeah i can't stand the whole i can i've embraced it but i still i still get called a pogue and i we had machine gunners we had all we had all the stuff we had crew served weapons and we had to blow shit up we humped all the time we did all the things and we were oftentimes out in front clearing minefields, getting shot yeah. at before anybody else, right? Yeah. But I was still a pogue because I don't have O3 in front of my shit, right? So, and it's fine. I, I've embraced it all, all to hell. But 
everybody has a job to do, whether you're admin, whether you're supply, whether you're anything, everybody has a job to do, right? Mm -hmm. So, and, and it takes everybody doing that job for the Marine Corps to be successful. So, I don't know. I know we rib each other and give each other shit about the Pogue stuff and all your, you know, an 01, your admin, yeah, yeah. whatever the hell. Like, it, I just do that in good fun. Everybody's yeah. got a job to do. And everybody made the decision to join the Marine Corps exactly. in the first place, you know? Exactly. So there's something to be said there. They made it through boot camp. They made the decision to join. They yeah. deserve some kind of brotherhood, no matter what job. Exactly. Yeah, no, exactly. And then on top of that, you have the guys who, like one of my buddies, um, he's now a master sergeant, um, but he has a purple heart. He got shot while he was in Africa. Uh, I think Iraq, I'm, I'm not sure. But he has, you know, he went as far as to his license plate says bulletproof on it. And, um, oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> and that's cool. Yeah. And um, but yeah, dude, like he, you know, and then funny, like so not funny story, but it's kind of like what the fuck type shit. So yeah. the other day I was on and this is for hey anybody listening, go go look at your medical record jacket. And make sure that everything that has happened to you is in there. And also go and make sure you have copies of stuff because I'm in the middle of going through um, the VA getting claims and shit. And a buddy of mine, he's transitioning out of the Marine Corps. He's a gunnery sergeant and he got shot. And when he was in Iraq through the shoulder yeah. and um, he has a purple heart from it. And he, He's been going through just to get everything documented, sleep apnea, all these things and shoulder issues. And all of a sudden he goes to the, to the corpsman for one of his appointments and the doctor is like, Hey man, like you seem like you have a lot of shoulder issues. And he's like, yeah. And he takes his blouse off and he has a bullet wound that goes through and through. And the doc and the corpsman's just like, Oh crap, you were shot. And he's like, yeah like 12 years ago and the guy and the corpsman's just like i don't it's not in here and it wasn't anywhere in his medical record nothing and he's just like bro what do you mean and then as he as this is happening he's like you know what's funny he's like to himself he's like every time i've always come to the doctor whenever i would complain about my shoulder no nobody would ever be like oh no shit you were shot like no and he's like i never realized that so now he goes, he goes, luckily he went home and he had like this old freaking like, you know, like one of those big black um, bins. You yeah, know, the like, messenger bag. Yeah, yeah, you get for deployment. And he went in there and luckily he had his, um, his medical record from when he got home from Af Iraq or Afghanistan, whichever one it was. And he was, he brought it to medical and he's like, bro, like this is, yeah, like here's all the documents like so i was just like dude like what and this dude's walking around with a bullet through like went through and through and you know i'm like wow like this is and that's the hey anybody listening like make sure you're stuck because like when i hit like when i was starting to go through my my uh my va claims they were asking me about stuff and i was like dude it's all my medical record and they were like no it's not there. And I, and luckily I had a copy at my house and I was just like, well, yeah, it is. It's like right here. And I don't know how it just missed, like it wasn't there. And now I had it, but luckily I had it, but yeah, man, like make sure your stuff is getting documented, you know, especially as you're getting out. And, and that's the other thing too. And me and him were talking about like, don't be afraid. And that's a huge thing too. Like, I don't know if, if you dealt with that at all, but like, you know, people who, you know, who get out and they're like, Oh, I don't, I don't have PTSD. I didn't see things as nearly as badly as other people. I don't rate that shit. I'm not going to go get help and, and stuff like that. Like a lot of people tell me that they've had those issues. Yeah. So how, when you were getting out, like how was your transition getting out? They didn't transition us at all. Like we didn't have the transitional classes. Like oh, we got shit. back. And so, because it was so early and all the stuff they didn't, that we had tap and tamp, but that was all about how to write a resume and all that other stuff. Right. It wasn't about decompression from a war zone. Right. It wasn't, it wasn't to the extent there. So we got back as soon as we showed up on the Harbaugh, got all our stuff, um, met the families. They turned us loose on leave. Like we were on leave like immediately. And then, um, we'd come back and then I EAS, we got back in July of Oh three, I EAS in March of Oh four my platoon went back in February. So I had to watch all them leave because I was EAS and it wasn't a stop loss at that point. Right. So I didn't, I stayed back. I was leave behind party and I EAS. 
Um, but I got up at zero two and watched them leave again. And then they lost people that time. So I struggle with that. If I was there, it would have been different, all that stuff. And, you know, likelihood of it being me making a difference in it. Who knows? Who knows? Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's just the thing I struggle with. But, but my, we got a guy, he's my, one of my best friends in the Marine Corps to this day lives in Virginia. He got shipped to us right out of school into Kuwait. So within six months of him standing on the yellow footprints, he was in war. Like oh, legit, shit. bam, bam, bam. So he ended up doing three tours in Iraq in a four year enlistment, like wow. three tours. And I, I saw that writing on the wall that it was going to be six to eight months every year. And so I decided to get out. I'd met my, she was my girlfriend at the time. Then we got engaged in California and then she's my wife now. So we, um, I didn't want to be a statistic. The divorce rate was like 70% or something ridiculous whenever we were over there because mm -hmm. there hadn't been any long-term deployments until then. And then everybody, Jody come out of the woodwork and did his, uh, did his work. Yeah, I guess a lot of dear John letters and all that. And I just I saw that I didn't want to be a statistic in that way and just decided to get out. I was ready. Um, I was going to go to NASCAR school over here and that kind of fell through. And so I just got out and started building diesel engine generators. I was mechanically inclined, built cars before, worked on cars. And I was like, well, what do I do? And just started doing that. And then any job that I could make money and then moved up making money through the years, got my degree. I used my GI Bill and got my business degree in 2010, which I highly suggest anybody use. That's it's free money is sitting there. You earned it. Um, and I went to one of those online schools. I had kids at the time. I couldn't. There's no way I was going brick and mortar. I had to work to pay for the house, pay for bills. And um, I got up at five every day, did my schoolwork for two hours then went to work at seven and then got my degree in two years. Cause I did, I did 28 MCIs while I was in the Marine Corps because free college courses. I ended up skipping two years of college because I did so many MCIs. Yeah. So I wish more Marines would take advantage of that. They're just too busy. Like, dude, you're it, not wrong, man. I like right now I have, so I haven't started going to college. I'm like, I'm dabbling whether, whether I want to, or what I want to go for. Cause the other thing I don't want to, I, I'm, I'm going to use it. I just want to make sure I know what I'm going for. Um, yeah. But um, so I, when I got off of recruiting duty, I, my buddy, uh, Mass Sergeant Velasquez, he had, he, he told me, he was like, Hey man, there's a couple of colleges that'll take, everything you've learned on recruiting duty and they'll pretty much give you like a year and a half of schooling. And then all you got to do is like another year and you'll get your bachelor's degree through certain colleges. Um, and then I also looked into my, like my stuff and like, so with everything. So for me, it's same thing with all my MCIs, with everything I did on recruiting duty. Um, I only need like a year and a half to get a bachelor's degree. Um, yeah. So you know, and that's the thing too, is like, and that's, a, it's like, you know, the, I'm glad you brought that up is like, so many people say like, they, they say the Marine Corps didn't do anything for me, or they say all these negative things. And it's like, okay, but what did you do? Like, why didn't you go to college? Why didn't you go to school? Why didn't you go to school and then use your GI Bill afterwards? Like, there's so many things you could have done and you just didn't do any of them. Yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, so, you get, you get out of it, what you put into it. It's just, exactly. it's just like boot camp too. You get out of yeah. it, what you put into it. Yeah. And it's, you have to take advantage of the stuff that's there. I mean, I went to the field all the time. We trained all the time. While we were in the rear, we didn't do shit, right? We'd play mm -hmm. PlayStation, I mean, I don't know, six hours a day, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Tiger Woods golf was our bag. Like, we, we, we jammed on some Tiger Woods. Um, but then I would take an hour or two and do MCIs. It's it. Yeah. And we still had to press camis and still had to polish boots back then. And I'd take off my camis after we were secured, press them out before I did anything that night polish my boots so they're ready and then if i wanted to go get shit housed i could i knew i was ready for the next day right it's just it's just basic stuff and, I, and that's what i hate how much the marine corps changed from that because that's that attention to detail that wash and wear shit came out whenever i was in i had to from the time i had to eas i had to maintain one pair of digital camis so i bought a pair and i hated them like Wait, i still wear my on, ones you have one pair yeah, because I still had Woodlands. Like we had to buy one every six months. You had to buy a pair as they were getting released, and you had to stop wearing your Woodlands. Like that mm. was the transition. But I had Woodlands. I had removed the buttons. I had removed. I had glued all. I mean, they were stand up on their own. My, I, my Garrison camis were top notch. Like I loved those. But I still got them hanging in my closet to this day. Sleeves rolled and everything. 
But um, I learned that from NCOs that taught me, like, hey, you got garrison camis, you keep your field camis on one side, but you damn well better look good in garrison. And that's, I don't know, I took pride in that shit, man. I, I missed that. I missed the way it, just a tight rolled sleeve feels on your bicep. Like, there's just some things I miss about it. Um, but that's, a lot of that stuff is lost. The tattoo policy has really pissed me off, too. Like, I, I don't really, I don't really understand why they keep messing with stuff that's kind of bro so you, you want to hear something really funny about the tattoo policy What's that? so this guy and now dude i'll never forget this shit because it was fucking hilarious so okay. i'm at recruiting school like the day that you get picked up and the day that you get there you're all standing in line outside in san diego and your alphas okay. and so we're in line, you're waiting to get, you know, and you got to get height and weighted and they got to go over your tattoos. They got to go over your, your uniform. They got to go over to make sure that you're not out of regulations. Even though when you leave your duty station, you have to go through the, the checklist to get approved to go to the schoolhouse. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so this guy is standing there and he's just, he's standing there in line. He was a guy, I believe he was a staff sergeant. And you could tell this dude was like the saltiest of salts. Like this dude had like the stat, like this big ass stack. And like, he's just looking, he has like this no regs haircut. Like he just doesn't give a shit. And, um, <laughs> and we start to, and he had like, th pro like three hash marks and we're all talking to him. And he's just like, I don't even know why the fuck I'm here. And we're all like, we all, we're here what do you mean and he's just like i'm not gonna be a recruiter and we're all like what are you talking about staff sergeant and he's just like dude i've got a full fucking sleeve he's like the moment i fucking walk in there they're gonna tell me to take my fucking alpha blouse off they're gonna tell me all my shit and they're gonna fucking tell me to go the fuck home and then they're gonna say who the fuck sent you here so i'm just we're all just like yeah but they know you're here like you gotta prove to be here yeah. no shit they go, you go into this room, he freaking walks in, and I would I actually ended up being right behind him. So they they asked me, I'm like, Oh, I have a tattoo on my on my right my uh back right shoulder. They're like, Let me see it. I show him, they're like, all right, cool, put your stuff back on and get out of here. And this dude, he's like, I have a full sleeve, and they're like, What? So they know, so not only do they say what, they literally <laughs> call the sergeant major in. They call the master guns in. They call the CEO in just to verify that they see this fucking sleeve tattoo. And yeah, like, no, he's making it up. He put on one of those fake ones. And the whole entire command is now yelling at him that he's there. And he's just like, he's like, you approved it. He's like, it's in my, in my, he's like, open that up. He's like, I'm, he's like, there's my tattoo photo. He's like, you guys let me come here. He's like, I'm here. And this is my tattoo that's in that picture. He's like, y'all are, and they literally just told him to go home. And then he yeah. had, but the most effed up part about it was he flew all the way out there, checked out of his unit, like did all this shit. And then he had to go back to his unit and, and, it was, back in. and then do all this crap. And it was just like, but it was just and there. And, and I get it because they were like, well, because he was grandfathered in. And it was just like, apparently because of the way the tat, there are, I think what they said was because of the, because of the way the tattoo policy is currently, we can't have you on recruiting duty out of regulations because it's just not going to look right. Yeah. And it was How like, how many people did you turn away on recruiting duty because they had too many tattoos? Bro, you have no, so it, it and that's the thing though. It's just the taste. You know what I mean? Like, bro, there would be, when I was on recruiting duty, we had this dude i'll never forget man this guy i'm glad we were able to get the waiver in because if we couldn't get the waiver in, i would have felt so bad so this dude he immigrated here i don't remember where i think it was mexico and he immigrated to mexico he, he immigrated here from mexico and my buddy met him he's an engineer too he um he met him as a sophomore in high school and yeah. He met him in a sophomore year in high school and he motivated the hell out of him, always hit him up, always hit him up. And then finally it came to his senior year and it was my buddy's last year on recruiting duty. And he hits him up. He's like, hey, bro, are you fucking ready? And the kid's like, yeah, dude, I'm so ready. I got a Semper Fi tattoo. And my boy's just like, oh, yeah, my boy's just like, wait, what? 
And he's like, yeah, he's like, I got a Semper Fi tattoo. My family knows it. I know it. I'm fucking ready. And he's like, well, where'd you get the tattoo in? And he's like, oh, I got it on my, on my wrist. And we're just like, bro, are you kidding? Like, dude. So not only like, are you not allowed to have it on your wrist, on your right hand because of the saluting, but you're not allowed to have it on the wrist. And you're, if you have it on the wrist, you have to be able to take a business card or your ID and it has to be that far away for whatever reason, but that's the, the policy. So you yeah, have to be able to do so this and yeah. So it's some whatever. So dude, we had to, he had to like, he had to have a first class PFT. He had to have, I think college credits. He had to have a certain ASVAB score. And, and then we had bro. And not only that, but like, it was like a, a seven month, eight month process for us to freaking get the paperwork and the he had to write a letter to the freaking to the colonel the colonel had to see it then it had to go to the to the general at um at paris island and then and dude like when i was getting off recruiting duty Mm -hmm. and even now i have friends of mine on recruiting duty there's people who are getting tattoos turned away for too much color in them God. Like not even the tattoos out of regulations. It's literally someone's like, yeah, there's just too much color. And it's like, it's like, dude, like, what are you talking about? And that's why it's even crazier because like right now, like I'm glad I'm on recruiting duty only because you have the tattoo policy, which dude, you don't understand how many people, I can't tell you how many people have turned away. A funny story about turning a kid away. Never forget this shit. So I'm in my car. And uh, I get a phone call and this kid's like, hey, man, I'm on my way to the office and I want to be a Marine. I have all my documentation. I'm like, let's fucking go. I'm like, yeah. dude, yeah, man, I'm having, like- a, I'm having a bad day, like horrible day. I'm like, dude, let's fucking go. So I freaking hop in my car. I whip it. I get there and um, I walk in and it was PT. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like, all right, guys, hey, I'll be out there in a minute. I just got to meet with this kid. And um, just give me a few minutes. I'm going to meet with the kid and I'll be right out to help you guys with PT and da, da, da. And this dude, as I walk in the office, stands up and he goes to give me a handshake. And I'm just like, hey, what's going on, man? And I'm just like, oh, you're here for the army? Because this guy has a full sleeve down to his down to his right, uh, all the way down and on both arms. And I'm just like, well, oh, like, nice to meet you, man. And he's like, no, it's me. I just called you. I'm like, I'm like, what? And he's like, well, yeah, what's up? I'm like, dude, you, you have full sleeves. Like, you can't join the Marine Corps. And he's just like, I'm like, I didn't ask you that on the phone. He's like, and this is like a really boot moment of mine. And I'm yeah. like, fuck, I did not ask you on the phone. I was like, I didn't ask you. I just got so excited that you were here. I didn't even think to ask you. So I started talking to him. And I bring him in the office and I explained to him the whole policy. I'm like, hey, listen, bro. Like, and this dude's doing like 30 pull-ups. Like this dude's killing life. Right. And he's just like, yeah, man, I just didn't know the tattoo. And that's the thing that you hear all the time. And it's like, it's kind of bullshit because people say to you all the time, they're like, oh, I've always wanted to be a Marine. And then you're like, okay, well, da da da, and then you find out I have full sleep. I'm like, bro, if you always wanted to be a marine, you never thought to look up the policies on tattoos. Yeah, like was permanent. Like you never thought about that. Like, but no. So I start talking to him, and then he says to me, "No, my bad. It wasn't two sleeves. It was one sleeve." Mm-hmm. And then he says to me, "He's like, hey man, I want to get it removed." He's like, "If I get it removed, will can I join the Marine Corps?" I was like, "Listen, I was like, I'm not allowed to tell you to remove it." And I was like, and I also, even if I could tell you to remove it, would tell you not to remove it because nine times out of 10, it's not going to fully be gone a whole sleeve. And I was like, and you're still going to have scarring from it. So I was just like the chances of you even then getting, cause even, cause even if you get it removed, that's also a waiver because you changed your skin and it's a scar now. So now that's a waiver. So long story short, he tried, he went, he went and tried to get it removed. He went through like all these sessions, spent all this money and what? he just ended up not And another thing, t- tattoos. I had a female, she's now um, a corporal, a mother, um, and it has one on the way. And she, she paid $10,000. I think it was to get her. She had a tattoo um of a rose behind her neck and yeah. she paid like 10 grand to get it 
So she went to one specialist and it started, I believe it was 10 grand. It was like an, it was an, it was like an astronomical amount of money. Like it wasn't cheap. And it started off with like laser and then the laser like did nothing. Like she was going through treatment, 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 and it did nothing. And it was still there and you saw the ink. Now it just looked like an ink blotch. So then she went to a doctor and she had like the skin of her ear cut off so they could just flap it over the skin. So it would literally just be a scar. Yeah. So she did that and she's in the Marine Corps. She's a corporal now. Um, and she's actually about to get medically separated, but you know, yeah, dude, it's crazy. And the amount of people, bro, I would walk over to the army all the time and be like, Hey man, here you go. Fully qualified kid. What's wrong with him? Tattoo. And I'm not even talking like neck tattoos, like stuff like that. I like literal, like, you know, like shit tattoos. It's just like, and you and they're fucking great candidates. It's just a tattoo. And I get it. Like, I, 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 I get it to an extent because I did at one time when I was a corporal, I spoke to the Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, Sergeant Major Green. Um, and that was the question everybody was asking him, you know, why is the tattoo policy like this? And I guess their thing, and I, I kind of get it at the time, him and I think it was General Amos, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm correct, their, their thought process at the time was that due to the Marine, due to the world, and due to the Marine Corps tattoo policy at the time, it was screwing up the way it looked when Marines got out and were trying to get jobs. So people were getting out of the Marine Corps with all this experience, with college degrees, but then they weren't getting hired because of tattoos. So their, so their thought process was, we're doing you a, dis, a, dis, a disservice by allowing you to get these tattoos in the Marine Corps and then you go back to the civilian world and employers aren't allowing it. I and get, and then it. and then it became a professionalism type thing. Because if you really think about it, the average person who gets a full sleeve tattoo isn't doing 20 or 30 years in the Marine Corps. Yeah. You know what I mean? So for yeah. them, it's more so like a professionalism thing. Like, dude, I remember talking about fucking tattoos and shitty leadership. I remember... There was this fucking dude when I was in the reserves. We were out at um, we were out at uh, at Fort Drum, I think it was, and we were doing our two week AT. And this dumbass, I, I'm not gonna sit here and say that he wasn't fucking stupid for doing this, but he was fucking <laughs> dumb. But I think they went way too fucking far to the left. So this dude was literally checking out of the Marine Corps in two weeks. He didn't have to go to AT, he didn't have to go to drill, because once you meet your service limitations, you don't have to go to your, your annual training. Yeah. So he just willingly was like, no, nah, I'll go. Like, I'll, I'll do two more weeks with the boys for one last time. The thing is, is that right before this, he decided to get a full sleeve tattoo. And his thought process was, well, getting out in two weeks, what the fuck does it matter? So he got a full sleeve tattoo and he was out at the in the motor pool and the, the battalion sergeant major saw this Lance Corporal walking by with a full sleeve tattoo. And he was just like, hey, Marine. And he was like, first of all, is that in freaking regulations? It's not. Second of all, do you have a page 11 for that? You don't. Third of all, is it, should you even have that? And he's just like, and he tells him, sergeant, he literally tells him, he's like, send in a prayer rest. He's like, sergeant major, I get out of the Marine Corps in two weeks. It's my last drill. I didn't even have to come here. I was like, I just literally had a, he's like, I just got it. And he's like, come literally not even like a day, like the next day morning formation company wide NJP. And it's like, dude, the guy's getting out of the Marine Corps in it's two kind of make example. I, like, hate, I hate leaders like that, man. Like, I dude, like, 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 dude, this guy's about to get out of the Marine Corps in two weeks and you got to really just like, like what? And I get it. Like what did he do? What? Okay. Yeah. But did you have to really go that far? Like, I don't that's, know. That's, that's, that's toxic leadership. You don't need, you don't need to do that. You need to say, well, Hey, good on you, man. Enjoy, you know, enjoy the rest of your life. Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't know about, I get, I get what the Sergeant major was saying. Like, I understand that, but I'll tell you, I've had a sleeve for a long time. I worked my way up and I made it. I made it into corporate at Husqvarna. So I was a product manager in marketing there. 
and that was one of the last the last job I had for I went full time with the soap stuff. And um I interviewed in a suit, obviously, right? The next day, people tell me you need to wear long sleeves. Like don't not people at work, but like my family and everything, you don't nope. Or polo went in there, took a piss right next to the president. And I, I mean my job, I had to I had to present to the president of North America once a week on my category. Never a problem. So I won't say you never can. You get it from what's in here again. Yeah. If they view your tattoos, then you know, don't yeah. just don't show it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily stop you. Some employers will it will, but you just gotta well, find one. And that the and well, and the thing too though is that like it's for instance, like my mustache. Mm -hmm. I have a mustache, I enjoy having a mustache, but mm -hmm. there's people in the Marine Corps who don't like having a mustache. And, cool. and I'm not going to lie. I'm going to tell this story. And my boy, if he listens to this episode, I don't know if he will. He'll make fun of me. So I had this fucking sick ass mustache on recruiting duty. And um, my, my, uh, so my major, my major had uh, my, my CEO at the time made a comment about it. And he was like, no, 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 my bad, my bad. I'm telling this whole, this is the second time, the first time. I had this huge mustache before I got on recruiting duty and I was a mailman and I went to go as a reservist. You have to do an interview with the commanding officer to get on recruiting duty. So yeah. my boy calls me up. He's like, Hey man, come meet the CO. And I was like, Hey man, I'm like, I'm letting you know, like I'm at work right now. I'm a mailman. Like I'm dirty as shit. Like I've been delivering mail all day. So I, I'm in my uniform and I was on the route where the recruiting office was which is why he called me. Cause I told him like, Hey man, like if he's there, like I'm there, like I'm around the corner right now, I can swing through. So my first introduction to the, the CEO of this unit is I'm literally in the short shorts. It's the summer yeah. and I'm freaking, I have this big burly mustache and um, the CEO just looks at me. He's like, Hey man, I've heard great things about you, but straight out, he goes, if I put you on recruiting duty, you're shaving that fucking mustache. He is like, do not fucking show up to this RS do not show up in alphas wearing a fucking wearing your alphas in that fucking mustache. Cause I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to sign your orders and I'm going to tell you to go the fuck away. So I was just like, good to go, sir. Yeah. So I show up, I, he gives me the orders. I show up, no mustache, boom. And then all of a sudden, like a year or so come by and uh, our new Sergeant major checks in and, um, and, uh, or he, he was there, but I hadn't met him yet. And his name was Sergeant major Allen. He's now retired. And uh, my wallet was sitting on my table and um, it had my driver's license on it. And in my driver's license, I had this huge freaking mustache. <laughs> and my daughter, my son was about to be born. It was like right before I was going on um, uh, maternity leave or whatever the fuck it's called. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> and my sergeant major looks at my wallet and he just goes, what the fuck is that? And I was just like, that's a Bennett. Sergeant Major, I was like, that's the real me. And he was like, why the hell don't you have it? And I just looked, I just looked at the major and I was like, because he told me to shave it. And he looks at me and he goes, well, I'm telling you, by the time you fucking come back from fucking baby leave, you better have a fucking mustache on your face. And I was just like, I was like, okay. I was like, I have no problem with that. So I go on baby leave, I come back and boom, I have a mustache and I start killing it more than I was on recruiting duty. And, um, all of a sudden, so my son was born in April, July, June, like June comes and they're like, hey, we're going to put you on the meritorious staff sergeant board. And um, I'm like, all right, word. So I freaking I go and I get my picture taken in my chucks with my mustache. And I'm I, I didn't think anything of it. I was like, whatever, like I have a mustache in regulations. Like I even got it cleaned up before I went, had like everything. It was nice. And um so I take the picture, they, they routed it up, boom. And like two weeks later, I get a, we're at family day and Sergeant Major comes outside. The guy who told me to grow the mustache comes outside and he starts blasting me. And he's just like, he's just like, hey man, he, he doesn't blast me, but he's like, hey man, come over here right now. And I'm just like, yes, Sergeant Major. He's like, hey, you need to go get your freaking uniform. You need to put your uniform on and you need to go get a fucking new picture and get that shit uploaded to MOL immediately. And I was just like, I was like, what, what's going on? Like what happened? And he's just like, listen, man, he's like, we're going to brief your photo. And apparently 
other sergeant majors had seen my photo or some shit and people didn't like the fact that I had a mustache and uniform and that I was on recruiting duty. And they literally made the comment of we're not going to promote somebody who looks like that in uniform on recruiting duty. And why have the regulation? Ex- exactly. Have the regulation? Right? So my boy, um, my boy, who was my boss at the time, I went and told him he, he looked at me and he was like, bro, stop being a fucking bitch. He was like, you have a fucking regulation. Your shit's in regulation. He was like, keep the fucking shit. Just tell Sergeant Major you, you politely decline and you're going to keep your freaking your photo the way it is. And I was just like, I, and meanwhile, me, I'm like, bro, I want to get promoted. Like, I'm, I'm like, Absolutely. whatever. I was like, dude, and if all it is is a freaking mustache, like, whatever. So long story short, I take, I freaking, I get rid of the mustache. I still don't get promoted. So then after, so after I made it to the last person, it was literally me and some dude from Texas. So clearly I wasn't beating a guy from Texas. Like, dude, the guy, yeah. they, they walk in in Texas. Like, they yeah. walk in. So I lose to this guy in Texas. And um, at that moment, I was just like, screw this shit. I'm having a mustache for the rest of my recruiting career. And then, uh, but yeah, dude, it was just like, and, but the reason why I was saying that is that like my, and the reason why I haven't gotten any more tattoos than the one that I have on my back Mm -hmm. is just because there is a bias. Yeah. And and there's people who are going to say, oh, it's not because of his mustache or it's not because of his tattoo. It's because of this, this, and the third, but realistically, you know what, what the reason was for. So that's why the only reason with me, like, because <clears throat> I've thought about getting new tattoos all the time. Me and my wife talk about it all the time. And I have a great tattoo artist that I can go to. She's a, you know, my friend's wife. And um, literally she's like, Hey, let me know when, and I'll do your tattoo as I have things that I want to do, but I'm just like, bro, I don't want to get a tattoo. And then somebody met someone's like, Oh, and now I'm on the board. And you know, like now they got rid of the tat. Uh, they got rid of the promotion photos for that reason. Um, but now they're talking about bringing it back. So if you didn't know that, which your face looks I, like it, you didn't know that. I didn't. I, I, I never. So I they recently. Not, yeah. So so recently they got rid of um, when I was on recruiting duty. I don't know if it's still going, but I think it's coming back is they got rid of the your photo in your like. So when you get briefed to the command, they got rid yeah. of the photo because I guess, again, I'm, I'm not talking for the Marine Corps. I'm just explaining what i understand people that there was research that was done that the photo was causing biases amongst cultures amongst color and amongst people so they felt that it was better that they only saw a name and not a photo so but apparently i guess some new research came out now now that it's been a thing where there's no photo, I guess now they're realizing that that's not the case. So I don't, I don't know, but yeah, it was, yeah. Cause I, my thing was, and because my, one of my buddies, when he found out about it, he was all about it. And my buddy, the same guy that was talking about the common engineer. And my thing was just like, I was like, bro, like, but like, dude, there's some people that don't look fucking good in uniform and they look like trash. And he's like, yeah, but are they on regulations? And I'm like, well, that's the point of the picture is to find that out. Like, but yeah, yeah I don't know. So um, to go back to, to the, the topic of discussion. Um, yeah. So you got out of the Marine Corps, you ended up becoming a, you go, you went to college for business. Yeah. Um, so how, so when you, when you were, so I know you had said that you really didn't get too much of a transition if at all. Um, if you don't mind me asking, did you, battle with anything getting out especially having just got off with deployment like did you did were you battling with anything mentally physically emotionally like and especially not having at all of a transition like what were you going through anything well you've heard the term chasing a dragon right like you you want you have that adrenaline and you get so high on the adrenaline with war and with all the stuff right Mm -hmm. so like i dirt track raced and tried to do a lot of like stuff that would get me there. Like I kept trying to chase that feeling again. And then I realized it's never going to, never going to happen again. I'm not jumping out of an airplane, like the hell with that. I'm, you know, I'll try to throw some things, but I, I'm not, um, I was always ground side and I would stay that way. Uh, but yeah. And then once we had our, my son and I realized that 
they started doing a lot of the psyop stuff whenever I was over there, like the baby's crying to get people out of him. You know, if they were um, held up in an area, they'd play baby's crying until, you know, and hearing that stuff there. And then now having a baby that was actually doing that in my house, like wig me, wig me the fuck out. Oh um, shit. And then, so like, I couldn't take it. Like I didn't do anything bad, didn't do anything mean, didn't do, take anything out, but mentally it was, it was a struggle for me. And like, I know nobody likes to hear their baby cry, but to me, it kept triggering that. Mm. And then I'd be mad or I would drink or I would do whatever, you know, and, and, and me and my wife were arguing all the time. Shit was just going, it was, it was horrible. And I'd, I'd been out like two or three years at this point. So still young. I was 24, yeah. 25, 26, something like that. And like, she's like, you need to talk to somebody. And I was like, no, nah, I don't need that shit. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not a little bitch. All the things you just said. Right. And yeah, then yeah. finally did. And then they were like, yep, that is what it is. You know, you, you went through a lot. We need to work through it. And I went to the VA, um, talked to people, but then the counselors kept changing. So the counselor I'd get, takes me a while to trust somebody to talk about stuff like that anyway. Yeah. A couple months, couple, three months, at least of, of weekly visits just to even get used to them. And then they would, they would shift. Then, they, then that one would quit and then another one move in. I had to learn all over again. So I quit going to the VA for help. Like, I don't know, I don't know how many years ago. I found a woman locally um, that handled this stuff that specialized in it. And I got more help from her. Yeah, I had to pay for it out of my pocket, but I got more help from her than, uh, than the VA could do in, I don't know, a decade worth of, of back and forth and changing people and everything. Um, but then shifted my focus, did everything, you know, worked, 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 realized I want to do something on my own uh, a long time ago. And I had a couple of ideas here and there that just never really panned out, you know, never really came to fruition. And then um, I was pissed. I wanted to start a job. I knew I wanted to work for myself. I got tired of my creativity being stifled by corporate and having to go through 10 different levels of leadership and all this stuff and, and the bureaucracy and the politics that went around with being in corporate America. It just, it, I chased money for a long time and I didn't want to travel. I didn't want to be away from my kids. I didn't want to do any of this stuff, which was what was required of the next promotion. And I was like, I'm not doing it. I'm life ain't about money. And um, I just took, Step back, figure this out. Nobody was in this space at all. Doing that started in 2016. Nobody was doing this stuff. There's been people pop up here and there uh, throughout um, with a similar concept. Some one business has even copied the names of my shit. So like, I don't. I, I it's fine. They like to say it's it's uh, flattering, but it pissed me off. But then I'm like, you know what? I'll just I'll win. Um, so why I'm, why so? why like where did the soap come from like i wanted to start a i wanted to start a poorhouse i like beer i like different craft beer i like local beer i like all the stuff so i want to start one on the lake we live near and i got to realize that my pockets weren't that deep and i got pissed off not knowing what i wanted to do so i googled how to start a business with no money and start a soap business was like sixth on the list or something i'm like and this is no shit how it happened and so i was like huh a soap business. And I was like, you know, every time I go to, and I, I, I would go through every one and just like try to determine viability. Was, was, would this work? Would it not? And so then I got to look and I see, you know, every time I go into one of these shops, it's nothing but shit for women, like frou frou stuff. And I said, what about stuff for like alpha toxic masculinity motherfucking dudes? Right? <laughs> like, so how can I make this? Because, because the fact that it's all natural, it was like a three stage approach. Like, it would be visually appealing and then it would at least engage them in conversation about it. And then the third step would be them actually use it and realize how good all natural is for your skin and not putting chemicals all over it, not doing anything. So I knew it had to be like this shiny thing. Cause that's what gets men's attention. Like I know how we work, right. And put a grenade on it. It's ergonomically made to fit in your hand already. Um, I knew it had to have a flat side so it could rest in the shower. And so then I created, I got that, that shape's patented. I got a soap shape patented, like legit. So I got it on my wall. Um, proud of that, right? <clears throat> but uh, then I just went through, I was like, how can I put my spin on it? So, so my time in the Marine Corps, felt like I'd give the bars personalities. Like Salt Dog was the first one. And I envisioned it to be Gunny Highway, you know, from Heartbreak Ridge, like just rough, tough, mean as shit, take anything off of anybody. Kind of the opposite of that, right? So I've, 
give them the personalities made sense to like kind of match them and then just i don't know i've been able to, to to do whatever the hell i want to with this and it's been the most liberating thing if i make us if i make a scent that doesn't sell oh why wow, i trash them and go on but you know i've thrown i've thrown a lot of darts at the wall have stuck pretty good you know with whiskey and bad decisions and napalm and am and all this stuff so it's it's been good work with other veteran owned companies to try to you know promote everybody work with a lot of charities uh operation turbo is by far the favorite charity that i that i work with and i'll tell you why when you're deployed you always got these cats that get mail every mail call and you got these cats that don't get shit ever they don't have family they don't have anybody that cares about them don't have whatever well operation turbo takes nominations for people for care packages overseas you know for deployed people and those people that don't necessarily get packages all the time get them so morale still means something to me you know it's yeah. uh, very it's so I'm very, it's very near and dear to my heart. My wife sent me all kinds of stuff whenever I was in Iraq, cartons of new ports and logs of skull and all this shit. Right. So, and then when I see somebody that never got anything, I'm like, you know, they don't even have anything to look forward to like this. The, you, you don't even get, I don't, you don't even get a little taste. You don't yeah. even get a letter. And so that just kind of resonates with me. So I, I make donation bars. I send them to them. They put them in their care packages, but I, I really love, what she does and it's and it's a it's a really she's really good people and so that's my favorite one i work with others too the dv farm i love those guys it's a rehabilitation um facility for recovering addicts and so i've had a lot of people I met a lot of people along the way and i just i'm i'm close to building a facility i'm trying to work and figure out how much of a loan i can get to build one move and get out of the house i've converted the garage I used to build race cars and engines and all kinds of stuff in here and now i make soap it wasn't a likely transition i got stainless steel tables everywhere and pots and shit like it's um i definitely want my garage back so i can start tinkering again so, <laughs> so you just work out of your garage I do a garage and upstairs. I got my garage and my bonus room. My bonus room is pack out and storage and do everything. And then the garage is like my manufacturing facility. I got a big industrial sink put out here, like all the things. Cause I run the kids back and forth to school, run the kids everywhere. So I work in between and I knew I had to make this go. I didn't, the kids are so damn busy now. I don't know how we do it. If I, if I had a, if I had a seven to five, seven to four, whatever it may be, if I had a regular job, I don't know how the hell me and my wife would do it. My wife still works. So I'm on her insurance and this is continuing to grow and grow and grow. And I need to hire somebody. I want to hire vets. I got to realizing that work sucks. Like if, yeah. I, if, if it was, you know, if it was, um, if it was fun, they'd call it that. So I want to make an environment for vets. I want to hire vets. God almighty. I love them. Like I know there's, I know there's like a 10% factor out there. There's 10% of them that are shitty, but for the most part, yeah. A lot of the people I run into are awesome fucking cats. Like I can just have a conversation with you. Never met you. Didn't know you from Adam. We've had Instagram conversations. That's Bro, it. Right? It's so here's a funny thing talking about that. Right. So I have this guy, I'm actually going to, um, going to see him next weekend. Um, so my buddy that I was telling you about, um, the combat engineer, He's getting promoted to staff sergeant. So he called me up and he was like, hey, bro, I just got back. I found that I got selected. Like, can you come out and promote me? So me and my wife are going to drive down to um, New River, North Carolina. And, yeah. and a buddy of mine that I was on. So me and his dude, Ski, we were on recruiting together. And literally when I tell you, I'm like, I probably only had like four or five conversations with this guy at 5 a.m. sitting outside of MEPS just talking about how much we fucking hated our lives at the moment just talking about how like this was the only moment where i wasn't talking to somebody in my office i wasn't talking about work i was just bullshitting having a newport and just talking about like is this kid in the building that i just dropped off gonna make it today am i gonna get like and me and him would just sit there in the morning like fucking freezing cold mornings and just bullshit and i thought about it today i, I thought about this last night when i was on the phone with him driving home because so I'm going out to North Carolina and I don't have a house. My boy lives in an apartment and I hit him up and I was like, Hey, ski. I was like, I'm meeting up with my boy. I'm getting him. I'm promoting him, but I also want to see you. I want to see Michael. And I also want to see my boy Santana. And my wife has a friend, you know, somewhere else in South Carolina. I was just like, you know, how do you like, do you think it'd be okay if I could just, 
like chill at your crib. We could like have like a barbecue. And he was like, bro, of course. And he's like, let's fucking do it. He's like, dude, my house is your house. He started sending me pictures of his backyard. He's like, I got this. I got that. I got a pool. I got this. And I'm just like, and then, and then I started thinking about it. And I told my wife, because my wife was just like, who is he? My wife had no yeah. idea because I never even brought him up. And then I, and when she asked, like, who was he? I, I realized that, like, I've really only talked to him, like, five or six times while we were on recruiting duty together. And now, you know, he makes – um, he makes – he does woodworking. Yeah. So he makes, like – um, excuse me. He makes, um, like, welcome signs. He makes, like, some sick shit. And um, – so I hit him up for to buy something. So I'm gonna go pick it up. But the store, but just really all I'm saying is like you, like this guy that I've only met one time, is like, yeah, dude, like fucking come to my house, like let's have a drink. Let's you you need a place to stay, like let's go. And it's just like like yeah. when, when I hopped on here with you, I was just like just the way you greeted me, it was like it's like me and you knew each other forever, and we're sitting here freaking broing it up, you know. I think it's it's crazy, it's crazy what the Marine Corps mentality does and and even though we're you know you you got out in 2004 i didn't join till 2009 so even though there's like that gap of time different marine corps but same marine corps you know it's 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 awesome it's fucking it's great getting together and and veterans talk on the veterans because like you said there are some shit bags out there but nine times out of ten you realize like not 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 all that bad so a lot of good ones along the way you know i mean it's 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 good it's really good. Um, and being you know, owning a business and this stuff, it's like the best way to network. It's, it's, you realize you can, you can work with other jar heads. You can, you know, pick and choose who you want to work with, pick and choose who you want to hire. You can do like, I, I want to hire Marines. I don't discriminate against other veterans. Don't get me wrong, but I want to hire jar heads. And I've always said, you know, if we want to <clears throat> cut off at two and drink beer or, or that, I got a lot of my brothers that deal with their PTSD with smoking weed. Like, I don't give a shit. If you're productive, you go out back and smoke. I care less. Like I, I really don't care. I hate how there's a stigma around that. If that's how they function and how they, you know, cope with the stuff, it's ten times better than alcohol. Yeah. So if you want to go out back and smoke, and then you come back in and you work your ass off, high five. Yeah, you yeah. do whatever you want. Like it doesn't have to suck. That was my whole thing. Like work yeah. doesn't have to suck. We could have a good time, blast Metallica or blast '90s rap, whatever we want to do. Right. <laughs> And then just and then just make soap like that's it's my whole my whole thing. So that's the environment I want to create, and it's uh it's getting there. It's yeah. getting there. Five years in the house is enough. I've I've struggled and been at capacity for a while. So I just don't like going in debt. I self funded this whole thing. I don't like going. I just I grew it slowly with my own money and yeah, not in any debt. I just I don't I don't know. Do you but have the do you have any advice for anybody who is trying to get into the uh, entrepreneurship side of the house? Like one of my buddies, uh, Picado, um, yeah. he's trying to, uh, apparently he makes really good tacos. I'm not going to lie. I've never had them. So, yeah. but he says he does. Uh, so he wants to make up, he wants to make a taco truck. Um, so do you have any advice for anybody who's trying to open up their own business, especially in the world in which we're living. Um, do you have any, any do's and don'ts, any advice that you would give anybody since, you know, you've been doing it for quite a while now? I, I learned, I learned a lot of things the hard way. I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have, you know, it's just like, what am I going to do? You know, here and there you get registered with the state, you know, you have to do all the legal legalese yeah. bullshit to get going. Right. But the biggest thing is, and it's going to sound as dumbed down as I can is just do it. I see too many people have like the paralysis from analysis. They'll look at things, look at things, look at things, but never act on it. I don't know how many I tried and failed until it's like you throw shit at the wall until something sticks, right? Yeah. Just try it. So if he wants to do a taco truck, I've seen, I've got, a, I've been on Craigslist myself and seen taco carts that you can buy for like 300 bucks. So go stand on a corner in the middle of a city somewhere and just sling the shit out them tacos till you can buy a truck, you know, like, so it's, it's just start somewhere, proof of concept, it took me a year. I'm, I don't come from a long line of soap makers. It took me a year. To find out. <laughs> you know, like, I had to Google the shit out of recipes. Bro, I, like, oh, bro, the idea, like, hold on. Hold on. The, the idea that you just said, I don't come from a long line of soap. Yeah, I don't. That is not in my blood. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. 
you Google it, figure it out. I've, I made recipes that would work. I looked at competitors, you know, negative feedback. So any negative reviews they got, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, well, how can I build a better mousetrap? So did my research that way, made a harder bar that would last longer, that would exfoliate better, that was truly all natural. So it's like, I tried to fix all those problems. And then, but it's just do something, just do it, just work towards it. If, if you know it's gonna cost you $5,000, start saving now, start just just act towards something. I, uh, an idea is um, is nothing more than that unless you act upon it, right? Like you to make something happen. Like, yeah. and that's all, that's my biggest thing. Um, let's see. So Steve, um, the damn, the, the, uh, the family feud guy, he's got that whole take the leap thing. Steve Harvey. Yes. The take the leap video. I'm sure you've seen that, right? Yeah. If, if you ever get somewhere or, or the, the recording, that is it. Like just do it, just leap. And that's where I'm at with this whole loan going in debt and doing all this stuff, building a purpose built facility. And that's my leap. You're going to constantly take leaps throughout, but it's just, it's, it's working towards something. And you'll figure it out along the way. Don't make everything's not going to be perfect, dude. This is like this is like managing chaos. That's all you do as an, as an entrepreneur, as a manufacturer. The only thing I wish I would have done different is maybe had an idea and had somebody else make it, and like just been selling it, like set, so have my product. But then I couldn't control it, so I've been back and forth on that. It's a shit ton of work. I make 120 grenade bars of soap a day, like, and I make them, take them out of the molds, do all this stuff, package them package orders like if i could reproduce me i'd be i'd be fine like i'd be killing it we'd be a double everything and then I, that's how i can scale is just having to hire somebody teach them how to do it and then um then we'll have two people do it i'll hire somebody teach them how to do it and we'll still make it by hand still hang out still do whatever but i don't ever want to go to a wholesaler now after having done it like this for so long so yeah and where are you where are you at now south carolina so upstate south carolina clover south carolina Okay. How far is that from like, what's that near? I don't know anything about South Carolina. Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, North okay. Carolina. Yep. Yep. It's, it's about 25 minutes Northeast. Okay. From me. I'm about 25 minutes from the airport. Um, All right. No doubt. Do you have anything? So I guess the last question that I would really ask is where do we find you and yep. what should we be looking forward to? Do you have anything new that's dropping? Do you have anything new coming out? Yeah, absolutely. So it's at, at K Bar Soap Co on Instagram. Um, if you uh, if you're on Instagram, please give me a follow. I went from what fourteen thousand down to I'm like twenty seven hundred now. So oh, that man. was a kick in the nuts. Um, but whatever. Um, no worries there. At K Bar Soap Company on Facebook. We're on. I, I I dabble in TikTok and Twitter. You don't have to follow us if you don't want to, but I just I mess around there. Um, and then K Bar Soap Company dot or K Bar K Bar Soap Co dot com on the web. And um, what was that? You asked something else. John a blank. Tell us was it you asked how to find oh. me? Oh yeah, no. The next question was what. Um, is there anything up and coming that we should oh, yeah. know about? So we always do for October and I've opened it up to my email subscribers already. It's the save the Tatas bar. So we got a good um, friend that found out about her breast cancer. She's 30 and um, she's been going through treatments and 18 months of infusions and all the stuff, but she has her final surgery. We did the save the Tatas bar last year and donated proceeds to her and they live in New York. So she's, she's going to Manhattan, her and her husband, so um, we make that bar and donate the proceeds to her. So she's got her final surgery October 7th. So it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So we always do the breast cancer bar. So it is released to email subscribers now. It'll be coming out October 1st for, for the masses. We're going to give them first crack at it. We got a shower scrubber coming out. And there's, I don't know, there's a lot of things. Um, awesome. So hoodies. All right. A little bit. So. All right. Well, hey, thank you so much for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. Um, I'll let you get back to making soap. Um, yes, <laughs> and just thank you so much, man, for coming on. The conversation was great. Uh, definitely have you back. And I look forward to putting in my next order and getting some more. I need some more grenades in the house. Hell yeah. Well, thank All you right. for having me, man. I appreciate you. Thanks a lot, brother.